present arms order arms pose Rotarians, present arms <coughs> Now, Rotarians. <laughs> oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the Gentlemen, veterans of the United States Army. States Marine Corps. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, veterans of the United States Navy. Veterans of the United States Air Force. It's a privilege to introduce our speaker today. I've known Nellie Williams really since she was a very young person. It's been some years now, Nellie, I think. And one of the reasons is that we grew up knowing each other in fox hunting uh, here uh, in the United States. But she's also, as you know, from her presence at the podium on occasion, um, speaks uh, the true English uh, that needs to be spoken in this country. <laughs> she actually was uh, born near the motherland. She came to America uh, in, uh, when she was 12. She graduated from Dallastown High School and received her undergraduate degree from La Roche College in Pittsburgh. She returned to this area in her 20s, and she's been here ever since. In 2007, Ellie left a very successful career and decided that she was going to enter this uh, project of equine-assisted psychotherapy, uh, which became Equiteam. Um, through this nonprofit organization, she has helped many uh, in the last few years um, with the Creative Therapeutic Intervention Program for at-risk youth and families in need. 
In 2016, and here's the purpose of it being on today, she expanded that program to work with our military personnel and combat veterans. She's the executive director and lead therapist for the organization. Um, she received a master's degree from Shippensburg University. She graduated with honors, was president of the National <coughs> Honor Society for two years during her graduate career. In uh, 2015, she became board certified as a professional licensed counselor. She also holds additional advanced certifications in a number of areas, particularly uh, to do with equine assisted therapy, um, and particularly then as a practitioner in one area where she is only one of 20 in the whole United States certified to that level of accomplishment. In addition to her very busy schedule, I know that she has uh, a lovely husband and child and raises those, and she's also an adjunct professor at York College where she teaches general psychology and animal assisted therapies. Would you welcome Ellie Williams? Uh, District Governor-elect Patty, also known as past president, um, the guy that married my husband and I. We've known each other for quite a long time. So good afternoon. I'm so excited and humbled to be here today. And our Veterans Day celebration, it's so wonderful to see everybody here and to share a little bit about the work that we do at Equiteam Support Services. Before I begin, I would like everyone to know that I will be sharing um, some real life experiences and some of them are a little intense. So just ask that you use self care um, if at any time you become uncomfortable. So as Patty said, the Equiteam Support Services was established in 2007 to provide mental health therapy to at-risk youth and families in need through utilizing the EGALA model equine-assisted psychotherapy. So our work with this population, abuse and neglect, sexual assault, and complex trauma, it was decided in 2016 to expand our services to work with the military services personnel and veterans. So why does this population need mental health support, you ask? And I'd like to share some situations and scenarios from my clientele regarding these areas. Addictions. A veteran turning to alcohol to numb themselves of the memories from their last tour, or the use of opiate, opioids for pain management that turn into a heroin addiction. Combat trauma. A veteran shared with me I was sitting around the campfire with my family, and all of a sudden I was back in Afghanistan. There was burning trash all around. My heart was racing, I couldn't breathe. The smell of the campfire had triggered a flashback. Military sexual trauma. I was stationed in Europe, working with different unit. During my time there, I was gang raped by multiple members of that unit. Moral injury. During my tour, there was a kid in the village that befriended us. We used to give him candy. One day, this kid approached and seemed a little different. As he got to me, he pulled out a knife, slashed my arm, and stabbed me. At this point, the veteran paused in his story, and he then said, I had to put a bullet in him. With tears in his eyes, he questioned, why is it okay to do that over there and not here? Transitions. Coming home is so hard, I'm just expected to fit back into my family. I'm told that I'm a hero, but I was just doing my job. Part of me was left overseas. I'm not who I was when I left. I have changed. Traumatic brain injury. I can't focus, I can't work, I am useless now. And post-traumatic stress. Experiences that I've shared, if left unresolved, will create post-traumatic stress disorder. 
Those experiencing PTSD present always as being on edge or hypervigilant, or even the opposite, with emotional blunting and no feelings at all. There are so many issues for these men and women. Let me take a few minutes to talk about how our services help this population find mental and emotional stability. Today I'm going to talk about our equine assisted psychotherapy program as well as our neurofeedback. Someone's calling me. I'm a bit busy. <laughs> this quote perfectly re represents the work that we do. Tell me and I will forget. Show me and I may remember. Involve me and I will understand. The Agala model equine assisted psychotherapy is interactive, it's experiential, and fully involves our clientele. All the work that we do at Equiteam Support Services and the equine therapy is 100% on the ground, which means there's no riding involved. If I was going to be teaching riding, I would be teaching you how to sit, how to steer. The Agala model is not about that, it's about the client's journey, it's about their self-exploration, and it's different from the hippotherapy and the therapeutic writing. We address, specifically address mental health issues. We work in an individual setting with couples, families, and groups. We run very much like a regular outpatient clinic. We have an intake appointment, a counseling assessment, we get a detailed history of the client's issues and we establish goals. At the start of treatment, the client and myself will do outcome measures, outcome questionnaires, to get a pre and post, because we do the same at the end of treatment, score and rating the mental health disability or the mental health issues. <coughs> to date, Equiteam continues to maintain an over an 85% success rate of clientele leaving treatment with improved behavioral emotional stability. So what is EAP? It is not the Employee Assistance Program. We can help them too. So equine assisted psychotherapy is a modality where horses are utilized for emotional growth and learning. That's not my phone. The clients will observe horse behavior they will create different situations in the arena, and they will build relationships with horses. The initial discussion is always about the horse. What the client has observed about the horse. That's the important part. It's not about what I see, it's about what they see. The cool thing is, is we humanize our animals and we project our own stuff onto them. Ooh, they're cold, they're tired, they're anxious, which is wonderful for the work that we do. It is also, it's safer to talk about the horse first. The client in this slide, in the photograph, was having a hard day, a lot of anxiety. And he'd moved off to the side of the arena and he was just looking out over the hill. The horse that was loose in the arena went over beside, standing quietly, also looking out. At the end of the session, the client shared, huh, he was surveying the perimeter. We were keeping this place safe. My papers are stuck together. Okay. So as a clinician, I take those discussions and those awarenesses or those observations from the horse, an external discussion, and then I connect it to the client, an internal discussion. The client will often connect what's happening with the horse to their own life. They'll go, oh, well, that's like me. Sometimes I have to give them a little nudge, too. So why horses? One, they're really big, and they can be really scary, and that can really help with courage and bravery. They're powerful. They're also a prey animal, so they spend their entire lives needing to know where that lion is coming from and how they're going to stay safe. So in doing that, they're always aware of everything nonverbal. Being nonverbal, all of that energy they can feel when you're anxious, they can feel when you're happy, they can feel when you're sad. They are unbiased and non judgmental. They do not care who gives them candy, they will not be bribed. It is just 
They see you for who you are. So we have a team approach within the equine assisted psychotherapy world. The horses, obviously, they work on interacting with themselves and interacting with the client. We, we as the team, the mental health professional and the equine professional, stay as far away from that interaction as possible because we want it to be as natural as possible. So the equine professional watches horse behavior and keeps the environment safe. We watch whether the horse is facing out or in or their head is up or down, ears back, feet stomping. And the mental health professional then takes that language, discusses it with the client, and they build on that and then it becomes the client's story. So what does a session look like? Sessions will occur in anywhere the client needs to be, in the field, in the arena, in the barn. I always allow the client to find where they feel most comfortable. Some clients that have been under a sniper attack have a fear of being in wide open spaces or being in the long grass because of IEDs. So we are not going to have them, I'm not going to choose to have them in a long grass field if they're not comfortable there. The photograph on the left, we had asked the client to reflect on some of the areas in her life and some feelings and emotions about that. During the session, she became kind of reflective and just started journaling. And it was interesting because the whole time she stayed connected with that horse. She never let that horse go and it became a theme. And that theme, we kind of questioned at the end of saying, well, what is it about this connection? She said, I need to be connected to something. Right now, I'm not connected to anything. And through that discussion, we were able to find the family, the friends, the community. Those are the things she needs to be connected with and ways to do that rather than withdrawing and isolating. The photograph on the right-hand side, the client had identified that horse as being really anxious that day. He was really up. He didn't know what to do with himself. And we said, well, maybe you should take some time and see if you can get that horse in a better place. And he spent the majority of the session working to get that horse to calm down. You can see in the photo is, is facing the horse's face, hand is on the neck. The great thing about that was is he had a handful of things that he used, different techniques he used to calm that horse down that day. And wouldn't you know it, he could use them too. Cool thing is, is never underestimate, and never underestimate the power of the horse. So now I'm going to get a little bit more kind of off the warm and fuzzy thing. Talk a little bit about our neurofeedback. I got another phone call coming in. Hold on. Somebody needs me. Okay. So our neurofeedback programming, we decided to add this in because it's a brain training system. So when we have trauma, our brain becomes unbalanced and rigid and it doesn't allow us to deal with different situations. We utilize the neurooptimal neurofeedback system, and it is an algorithm, and it's all within the computer, so there's no room for human error. As you can see in the left photograph, there is a, a sensor that goes onto the head, one on the ear, and then there's a ground on the right earlobe. Don't worry, there's no electricity. So, what, talking about trauma and the brain freezing, um, the amygdala, which is part of the limbic system, that's in charge of the memory of emotions, right? So that fight, flight, freeze. We need to get that work in. We need to get that balanced. Our neurooptimal neurofeedback machine reads 256 brain waves a second. It's fascinating. It's a 33-minute training. We do a pretest and a post-test, and the photograph on the right you can see how rigid that brain was at the first screening. Very, very high peaks and valleys. After 33 minutes, the balance of that brain was unbelievable. This is one of the, probably the most extreme that I've ever seen, but it really does give a really clear um, example. 
So typically clients will start with equine therapy and they'll move to neurofeedback. However, we do also utilize the two services simultaneously because we meet the need of our clients. We need to know if they need it both right at, the, at that time, we'll use both, or we'll go from one to the other. Horses continue to help this population one person at a time. Whether it's standing quietly beside or resting a large head on a shoulder. Moving toward when they sense a need for support or moving away when needing space. They provide opportunities to tell a story that is oftentimes almost unbearable to speak. An ear that is free of judgment. They are a medium for healing. They provide safety when, when it is needed and push for more when there is deflection. There truly is something about the outside of a horse that is good for the inside of a man. Thank you. Yes, yes. The, the question was about the neurofeedback, um, the photograph of the pre and post. The pre was the up and down, and the after was the, the really balanced line, yes. Yes? Yes, uh, horses are not inexpensive. How do your clients, uh, <coughs> the Veterans Administration, self pay insurance, and what is your annual budget? Our annual budget, uh, the question is, is just how people pay. Um, all the services that we offer for veterans is at absolutely no charge to the veteran. We fundraise and grant right for that. Um, a lot of the veterans that we see are not working, have limited funds, and we want to make sure they have the services that they need. Our annual budget is about 250000 a year. Yes? Can you give us a sense about the number of clients that you have, the length of sessions, the number of horses? How many sessions does a horse do a day? They work hard. <laughs> a course of treatment for a veteran. Sure. I mean, just the, the throughput, how does that work? The question is kind of how many horses we have, um, how many sessions we see. Um, we have eight horses, four horses, two ponies, and two minis at the moment. Um, we probably have between, depending on the day, between eight and ten clients a day or sessions a day. We see over about, over a hundred people a week. Uh, we also have we have a, a children's services program as well as our veterans. Um, so we meet the need of the client where they are. So some of our sessions um, are eight to twelve sessions, weekly sessions. So just a few months, up to you know a year, two years, depending on the severity of the issue. Thank you. Yes. How is the uh, opioid epidemic in your county affecting the supply demand of your services? We see a lot of children that have parents that are addicts. Um, we also work with a lot of veterans that have had drug and alcohol issues. I would say probably 75% of our clientele has a connection with um, drug issues. Yeah. How do your clients find you? So we have, um, we work with the vet court program. Um, I work with different judges. Uh, different marketing tools, my marketing ladies here. <laughs> um, and we also have a contract with Children's Services and Juvenile Probation. Yeah. Are the horses trained? And if so, who trains them and what are they trained to do? The horses are not trained. Um, they, they, they do this normally, they're very natural. Um, we want them to be as natural as possible and very much of a herd atmosphere. Um, we just don't want them to be biters or kickers. Uh, we do tell our clients they all have teeth and they all have feet and to keep themselves safe. What is the landscape in the United States for veteran services of animal therapy and in particular horses? It's definitely increasing. Uh, I was at a uh, documentary screening on Monday uh, with some military personnel and it's, it's called a complementary therapy right now. 
um, it adds into traditional uh, office-based therapies, but different mil military outfits are starting to utilize the GALA model, equine-assisted psychotherapy, as a first-line um, form of treatment, which is wonderful. So we're getting there. It's just a little bit slow. And I believe the government approved $2 million um, for next year for the therapy. Yes. Uh, EGALA was awarded about 250000 of that $2 million for from the Adaptive Sports Grant for equine therapy. Yes? Is this type of therapy, uh, therapy unique to just equine? Or, or other animals um, capable? Other animals are utilized in different ways. Um, the fact that horses are a prey animal makes them so aware and makes the this type of therapy so powerful. Um, you have your therapy dogs and your service dogs. Um, but uh, yeah, there definitely is a unique aspect with just the horses. Yes? Is it an acronym for something? Yes, sorry. It's the Equine Assisted Growth and Learning Association, and they are worldwide. Anybody else? Ellie, I'm interested in your story. How did, what led you to do this? And how did you, get, how did you convince your husband it was a good idea? <laughs> and my family, and their farm, and their money, and everything. Um, so I worked for Children's Services for 10 years, um, and through child abuse and neglect, did not have the therapeutic supports that were really for kids that have had complex trauma. They didn't have those supports. Um, I actually started found Gala just by continuing education, and by the time I finished the first training, I'm like, I need my parents' farm, I need their horses, I need their money, I need everything, I'm going to quit my job. It's pretty crazy. Um, my ex-husband is a Marine, uh, Marine Corps vet. And he suffered uh, child sexual abuse that he never dealt with. So in addition to not only the, the, the trauma and the challenges in the military, he had a childhood sexual abuse. Um, so seeing how that affected my life and our marriage, obviously he's an ex-husband and it didn't, our marriage did not survive, it, was, it became a passion of mine to help others um, you know, find stability and uh, doing that through horses is I love horses and I love helping people so it was a perfect match. How do you match specific vets to specific horses? Will any horse address any or are you looking for characteristics in a horse to help address the characteristic issues of a given client? So basically asking if there's a match between if we match up the horses or if um, if uh, how that works. So typically the clients will pick the ones that they need to pick. Um, uh, we have one young lady that um, has no boundaries and she picks the one that kind of nibbles at you and pushes your boundaries and she had to learn to set clear boundaries. So we might set, Katie and I might set up a scenario of like, well let's, maybe we'll move in this direction or use these horses, but the clients are the ones that choose. So we don't actually hook them up with specific ones. And they might stick with the same horse the entire time, or they might change and, and use different ones. So I appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much for your time today. Colors of verse, March.
colors. Pop. Forward. March.